because it wasn't a tough press, but how did that help your game and get you going early in the first half? Um, now that uh, Tyler's out for a little while, I really, me and him talked, and he said, you know, me and him had a conversation. Just, I know I got to play with a lot of confidence now, and that's just really what I tried to do. You know, uh, they did a good job of pressuring me in the backcourt and making me and like making me work to get the ball off the court. But you know, when I saw the openings, I just took them and the ball went in today. So. Was your guys' game plan on the defensive coming in to really, it seemed like you guys really crowded Delegro. I know that he had, uh, you know, 20 points, 16 rebounds, but it seemed like every time he touched it, you guys swarmed him. He really had to work for a lot, and they're not a team that really shoots very well from outside to begin with, so was that kind of your game plan to really concentrate on stopping them around the hoop? Um, yeah, that's pretty much our game plan every game, you know. If they have a good big man, we want to try to attack them down the post and try to rip the ball up and kind of make them give it up, but, you know, he did an excellent job of uh, kind of beating the trap before it got there and kind of and making his move to the basket. So it was difficult to, to, get, to get a good trap on him. Corey, I don't know if you could just talk a little bit more about the team's mindset coming in. You know, you guys lose Tyler again. It just seems like, you know, everything that can go wrong will go wrong. But that was the loudest and most vocal before the game even started. I've seen you guys in the layup lines. You know, everyone's, ye you know, yelling, talking each other up. You know, just what was the team's mindset coming into the game? I mean, that's a mindset coach has brought with him. You know, he's trying to get us to be really energetic before games and throughout the game, so we can sustain um, positive, you know, reinforcement for each other throughout the game. And just coming into the game, you know, we lost our first game, so that would kind of hurt us all. So we just we had a good week of practice this week, so we're just going to keep trying to practice hard, and hopefully we can show it in the games. Anything else for Corey? All right, Corey, thanks. Uh, I guess I'll make a little statement first. I, I thought that was, <laughs> knowing Coach Herring like I do, I thought that was old school America East basketball right there. Back in the days with Drexel and Hofstra and BU and Northeastern. And that was old school, man. That was a, that was a beat them up, drag them out. That was a fight. That was a, that was fun to be a part of, you know, and I can understand how Coach Herring feels, you know, and uh, his team plays so hard, it's so hard to get open shots against the Stony Brooks, New Hampshire, uh, they're always in the stands, they always play hard, they're always pressuring the ball, they do all the little things, um, and we were fortunate tonight too, uh, to be able to, you know, Corey pick up a hot hand, take some good shots, and uh, be our floor general. And uh, he did a really good job on that. They did a fantastic job on Jake O'Brien. I look at Jake's numbers. It, it, it wasn't Jake. They, New Hampshire did a fantastic job on him. Number 32, Radar, it, it was really, really physical. Didn't give him much space. I mean, I, I felt like Jake, he was picking up Jake at half court. I really did. And he, he did a wonderful job, and they blitzed him. And So he, he had to make decisions out of the blitz. For the most part, he did a great job. Um, you know, obviously, I want to win the game 80, 72, 80, 70. Uh, but it's it's refreshing to know that you know, we can win games with Jake scoring four points and us scoring 60. Mm -hmm. And I think if you look at our record and our games in the past, I don't think we could have said that tonight. So uh, this is a good road win in a, in a hostile environment, and uh, we'll take it. Can you comment on Carlos, especially down the stretch? I mean, he had that horrible pass in the end of the game, but made a lot of clutch plays, and it's not going to show up in the box score. But I, I tell you what, I, I'll take the blame for Carlos's pass there because these guys are all doing something new now. You know, you lose Tyler, you lose BJ, you know, you, you're losing guys. So now, you know, John's playing too. He, he's trying to figure out his role and how to inbound the ball. And Carlos has got to get used to that, and we got to put him in that situation in practice. So, you know, we, we haven't practiced it live, and for the most part, he did a ph phenomenal job. That dive from behind, the, the rebounds, um, because obviously they, they pounded us on the offensive glass. And um, obviously we've got to work on that. Um, and we will. We will. Uh, but Carlos uh, was a true leader, a true senior tonight, who gutted it out, showed some grit. He only took three shots. Am I right with that? Four shots. Seven for ten from the free throw line. Five rebounds, 11 points. That's a pretty good night.
pretty good night for a, for a senior captain who's uh, pretty pretty much coming back home. It's cool. Coach, with you know, you've got a lot of new guys playing more now. You know, uh, Brennan Sullivan plays ten minutes. You've got you know Sherrod. You're really down to the you know kind of the end of, of the bench with an already short loss roster. Now you lose Tyler. You know. How much does that change your game plan? Because I know you want to play a really, originally coming in, all out, scoring in the 80s, you know, pressure defense. Do you really have to kind of change your game plan now? You know, I know there was a lot of almost offense defense subs in the first half for you guys, it yeah. seemed like every whistle, yeah. just to keep guys getting breathers when you could. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I just have to manage the game a little bit differently. Uh, when to run and when to pull it back at different situations. Um, you know, a lot of the times our offense is going to dictate the personnel on the floor, who's out there, um, how many how many deep bench guys do we have out there, and, and put them in a successful put, uh, position, in a situation where they're not going to fail and they're going to feel pretty good about themselves. And if, if we can do that, you know, until Tyler comes back, um, you know, we're going to have to grind it out a little bit, and there could be a game where, where we, uh, we hit on all cylinders, which we haven't done in a while, and it would be nice to see soon. You know, Corey, John, and Jake, and then Carlos all. You know, you think about the Maris game, everybody's really shooting the ball well. It's contagious sometimes. So um, I just got to manage the game a little bit differently and, um, you know, get guys in the right spots. Coach, what can you say about about Jake's uh, physical and emotional growth? The kid played 39 minutes and probably had to fight against two of the most physically tough guys in the, in the American East, you know, with the leg row and the other kid. Um, that's not easy to do. Um, uh, no, you being a big man, you know that. Yeah. <laughs> you know that. You know, it doesn't show up in his numbers, but uh, the kid played a, a, a great game. I, I thought, and I just told him this, and you know, co us, us, us coaches were a little crazy. He had blood around his mouth, and I was like, you look like a ball player. <laughs> I love him. I told him to wear a mouthpiece two weeks ago, but he doesn't want to wear one, so I said, fine, but. He, ba he banged and he grinded mm -hmm. for 40 minutes. He showed some grit, showed some toughness. I think he was really upset um, at Stony Brook, at Dayton. You know, he wanted to get a little bit more physical, a little bit tougher, mm -hmm. and I think he showed it tonight. And you know what? He, he doesn't need the ball all the time. And he, we talked right after the game, because I was telling him about the blood on the mouth, and he goes, I go, you know, you, you did a great job grinding it out and playing against those big guys, battling with them. And he goes, you know, coach, it was about the guards tonight. I, I set screens and I tried the offensive rebound and I did my role tonight because, you know, they played me really well and they were blitzing me. So on nights like that, that's what I, that's my role and that's what I have to do. And for a guy like, for a guy like him, who just comes off 27 points, to be able to accept that role, that's pretty impressive. That that's a kid starting to become a man. That's a junior now. That's a junior now. Coach, when you have, you know, tough not not bad but just tough physical grinding non-conference season leading into a game against Stony Brook that, you know, that's a very physical game, didn't go the way you guys would have liked, and then you have, you know, Tyler go out. You know, that's something that could just deflate a team season. And the guys obviously didn't come out like that today. They came out fired up. You know, what was the mood when Tyler went down with the injury during the week, and, you know, how did you just keep the team up, and how did the guys stay up for it? You know, I felt bad for Tyler, but I don't feel bad for our team. Um, this is going to make us a better team in February uh, because guys got to step up, like Jeff Valdis and, and, and Brendan and Sherrod Smith. They got to step up. And if we get them some minutes and they get in some games, when we get a full roster, hopefully in February, they're going to be that much better. Um, our foundation at, at, uh, at BU is attitude. And I just said to them, guys, next guy's got to step up. We feel bad for Tyler, and we do. We do. But now guys gotta step up. We gotta keep a great attitude. We can only control what our emotions, what we feel as a group. And I asked Corey to step up. We got Carlos. The lucky thing is we had Carlos running some one on the second team for the last two weeks. So he's prepared to, to play the one. Um, but it's all about our attitude and staying positive and staying upbeat and, and knowing and believing in each other. I think now these guys believe in BU basketball, which I've been trying to preach for, for a few months now.